please explain the national debt and the consequences to the economy of a massive debt. What I would say is that people suggest, many people, that as long as the debt is owed to yourself, that it's okay, it doesn't matter. I would disagree with that entirely because ultimately that debt is still owed. The debt itself is not created by the government. That debt is created a high, on a higher level because of the monetary system that we are all under, and that is central banking. So ultimately, we owe interest on that debt back to the private banking system. That's one very important point, and also wanted to address the fact that you will see in a lot of Austrian economics textbooks and books, you'll see the fact that when there's too much debt, you run into the problem of the moral hazard, you run into the problem where people lose the trustworthiness that this nation has. So they begin to basically pull away from it. And that happens once the ball starts rolling very quickly. These are some of the problems of the debt. And ultimately, as many suggest, it can just be piled up on top of each other forever and ever. Hey, Dave, you've been following me for a long time. Appreciate all the hard work. Thank you, thank you. Um, when the bonds collapse and all the credit default swaps get called, granted there's no bailout like last time, government default, what's going to happen to society when the paradigm of philosophy of insurance gets erased from a lexicon? What ownership without insurance can you get reimbursed for a loss? There will be no insurance worth anything if you look at what happened during the financial crisis, how the individuals, the traders, try to actually make money off of these credit default swaps, essentially buying the insurance on a crash, and then when they realized these institutions thought, hey, this is a great deal. Housing's never going to crash. But what happened? Well, of course it did. And then that insurance started to go bankrupt. Insurance is going to be useless. It always is. Look at the FDIC having but a fraction, a, a tiny fraction of actual amount of possible um, insurance basically for those should a bank collapse it's absolutely impossible the way they're dealing with this um what's going to happen to society well i do believe that there is going to be riots in the streets we're going to we are going to see riots in the streets if it's not for the food if it's not for hyperinflation we are going to see major cities erupting and that's just what's going to happen and if for not one reason or the other there's so many different reasons even if you answer 1000 question it won't make a difference if the quote big one remains ignored a question that a few dare to address let alone answer how do we end the federal reserve and take back our country well the federal reserve is obviously as aaron russo once said the head of the snake needs to be taken out but what can you do what are you doing to take out the federal reserve if you transact every day using their system then you're funding their system do you have your money in the banking system do you have it in the bank do you have any savings do you have any debt these are all the systems of control of these central bankers so guess what when you are in debt you think you're off scot free with that debt they own that they own you you are going to be forced into that debt Many will disagree with me, but that's their system of control. Don't disagree with me. You got to disagree with them and you got to take it up with them when the time comes. So what I would suggest ultimately is that, yeah, on a certain degree, you'll have to speak up about it. But it is absolutely crucial to be there on the grassroots level and be there to be the one to pull your money out of the banking system, to pay your debts off and owe nothing to this dirty, corrupt system. We're closing in on a digital money system that would be cash as what possibilities you see for local communities developing their own cash systems that would serve as a partial shield against the monetary controls envisioned by the oligarchic political future. My sense is that the absence of a global outcry and 
revolutions our best options are to decentralize as much authority as possible give power to local areas i agree perhaps no larger than counties doug tips ps texas already has as for it to go back and it's minting a texas silver currency some areas are definitely in favor of this going to some sort of precious metals or real assets or at least having control of what happens in the monetary system i do agree with this i think this is great but ultimately the general population is a bunch of zombies they're not watching this video so we can say a few bad things about them but essentially they're going to be screwed over and you can get certain regions that's why i do agree with you about the decentralization of power this is a great idea and i think that it is beneficial ultimately where it's going to go from here uh, you know i'm not too sure but uh, ultimately uh, it doesn't look pretty canadian government announced their budget deficit 36 billion dollars your thoughts please i've certainly got mines but it's all swears and insults towards Ottawa. So, well, I would say that this amount of money is not that bad when the Federal Reserve will just bail them out. No problem. But ultimately, the budget deficits will increase. That is the point of any government they want to expand. So expect that number of budget deficits to increase. The reason why it's increasing is just because the policies that they've been putting in place there's no different it's always going to expand because the wars over in the middle east and everywhere else around the world are expanding that budget has to increase and the amount of social assistance has to increase so expect it to rise just want to know your thoughts on the canadian economy right now are we heading into a recession or a great depression at least a recession for this uh, time in fact they even admitted that we were in a mini recession but ultimately we'll see things get much worse as china slows down canada's going to slow down look at the canadian dollar right now it is doing terribly and ultimately they say it's good for exports but our exports have barely gone up at all and the canadian dollar has been distressed for quite some time uh, and of course ultimately all dominoes will fall Looking to lower the interest rate on my house, what are your thoughts on the HARP program or any suggestions would be appreciated? HARP is interesting. Many um, people who buy houses and flip houses and they're into that, they actually like HARP thinking that it is a good idea. I would say you need to do your own investigations on this. If you can find a way to get it cheaper, then you should. My suggestion is to pay off that debt as soon as possible. That's the most important thing. Don't try to hold on to it that just because it's low for a long period of time, you still want to get rid of it as fast as possible. But definitely speak to those in the uh, real estate industry. If you can just talk to real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and everything, that will give you some insights. Pretend that you are interested in perhaps buying a new home. Make it seem good for them that they can sort of earn something off of it and get some information from them they'll definitely speak to you federal reserve is paying 0.5 interest rate on the big banks excess reserves is being done to ensure that there is an incentive for banks to lend at least that interest rate can you trace where this is going because the cleveland federal stress index is at like defcon 4 right now it's hard to track and trace everything that the uh, big banks are up to and obviously because they're not transparent at all what i would say is that we see in the mainstream media that it's sort of the central banks and the big banks as a separate entity and then you know on the surface level that's true but they're working together so we don't really know what we're seeing is accurate and I personally really don't like to play into that in the event of an economic collapse, if I was purchasing silver rounds, not as investment for barter, what weight would be the most useful? The lowest increment as possible. Governments print much money of thin airs, pay the communities for good and service. The community uses this money. Again, I get to purchase goods and services within the community. With this money, the community operates as it should, producing goods and services. So it goes on and gets wealthy. It keep, keeps printing money. The community keeps operating. How can printing money out of thin air be bad? All right, why is printing money bad? Today, governments and elites are super wealthy and the rest have some wealth acknowledging that the government elites get their wealth from nothing. I don't understand why printing the money is not sustainable leads to financial collapse. Perhaps my analogy is too simplistic. If printing money 
and your analogy is not too simplistic. I, I definitely see what you're saying. Many do agree with this. Many agree, just print money. Just print as much money as needed to fix the issues. But look at Zimbabwe. What happened with Zimbabwe? They destroyed their currency. Let, let's take it back a little bit further. Yugoslavia. Let's go back further. Argentina. Let's go and look at Russia even. Look at way back to Weimar Germany. Look at the United States two times. There are all sorts of historical situations where printing money has destroyed entirely to the value of zero a currency. If you remember, not worth a continental, you can Google that, and you'll see why. Because you cannot print your way to prosperity. The dollars printed on these paper bills have no actual value. This is nothing. It's all a sham. It's all a fraud. And one day that's going to be revealed. Different currencies will be revealed at different times, I believe, but look at Venezuela right now. Their currency is destroyed, completely destroyed. And at one point, it wasn't that bad in comparison to the US dollar, let's say, but now it's a joke. And why? Because of their destructive policies. If everything will actually start going south, I personally believe that we're first headed for deflation of the dollar, we get stronger while the bubbles pop. Of course, they would try to battle this by bringing huge amounts of new currency into the system, which will eventually lead to a hyperinflation. After this system could hypothetically collapse and probably some sort of new currency will be introduced. What is your take on this? I've always talked about this, basically that there will be a new currency that will be put in place, but not the currency you and I use today. It will be a currency which backs our currencies, perhaps something along the lines of the IMF SDR. What will happen to all the debt the mortgages people's countries have during these periods? And what will happen to the asset values after going to hyperinflation shouldn't mean it will be easier to pay back. Now that's the suggestion that many people make. I don't agree with this because the debts are owed to the people who created the debt system in the first place. They have you in their grip and they will not let go. This is very important to note. Many people will ignore this and I simply will not. What will happen to the debt if the system should actually collapse and most banks go bankrupt? The banks aren't going to go bankrupt. Let's be clear about that. Perhaps one or two or three or five. And all that happens is a consolidation. So if that happens, this is actually so beneficial to the system. Do you see? Banks go bankrupt. Let's say out of the let's say this, there was 10 major banks and nine go bankrupt, what happens is the government comes in, they take over a big portion of the banking system, and that one bank gets to become operational. Of course, it's partially nationalized, and this is the way it will work. Now, all of a sudden, instead of having competition between 10 banks, you have one bank, and it's owned by the government. Now, do you see where I'm going with that? Right here. Where's the best place to live when the stuff hits the fan? Well, any country could be good, or most countries, I should say, but you need to be self-sufficient. That's absolutely crucial. I've got into the, on, on this whole q and I've been talking about it quite a bit. Ultimately, you need to be in a secure location. If you're in a major city, it doesn't matter where around the world you are. There are going to be dangerous places. People are going to be upset and they're going to riot. 